This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast live from the Sorgatron Media Studio here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun here. Everybody in studio uh, with uh, uh, getting our pizza on with our sponsor, Slice on Broadway. Uh, with us, we got the, uh, a big crew here. We got uh, Katie Dudas is with us. Sales and marketing director over at the Scare House, and uh, and also master interviewer backstage at wrestling shows. <laughs> you can see that yes. over on Indie Mayhem show this past week and and this upcoming week, where you talked to a snake. I, I did. I talked sna- to a snake. You talked to a snake man as a cat at, at one point. As a as a cat. Yeah, I started. Didn't you hear the interview? I started out as a cat. I listened. You should. I don't know if I comprehended a lot yeah, of it, but can't. I listened. It's beyond anything. So as, as per use <laughs> with me. <laughs> It's ridiculous upon ridiculous. That's what happens when when we pull you off of Steel City Con directly into hey let's uh, do a wrestling show in Meadville and and give you um, a camera and a microphone. Yep, this is what happens when you let me talk and, to wrestlers and team you up with producer Missy, mm-hmm. who by the way is still back there on strike. I was hoping something visual would happen over there, but it didn't. It didn't really happen. Nope, she's on strike. She's on strike, hidden behind all of her. We got her a new computer, and and she's still on strike. So we're still working through uh, contract negotiations for that. (laughs) So anyways, uh, also with us uh, back in the studio is the gadget guru from Big Bank International Esquire, John Chichilla. How's it going? Hey. I'm excited to be here. (laughs) It's another window to look out. It's another window. <laughs> yes, yes. Instead of the mean streets of Dormont, PA, uh, you're, you're uh, checking out the taco stand of Beachview. So, and it's a mighty good taco stand. Mighty good tacos. And uh, speaking of lover of the tacos <laughs> stand, <laughs> taco stand, <Nice>. is, <laughs> is Brian Crawford, our friend from the River's Edge over there in Millvale and and getting uh, uh, geared up for Millvale Music Festival. Yeah, it's a cold, rainy day outside, and it's a cold, rainy day in my heart, Sorg. I've gone a week without internet. All of the Alexas were dead. The phone doesn't get reception. It was like living in a third world country. I don't know how I made it. I Can you imagine like an entire week with nothing? Nothing, Sorg, nothing. Dude, dude we didn't have internet here for uh, like a month, but we used our phone. But we didn't have like Alexis and stuff that needed to operate off of that. Yeah, so if I'm twitching a little, it's it's because I'm just getting back into society, just getting back into modern life. Welcome back. Welcome back. I hope you haven't missed all that much. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't connected. I was offline. It is it is it is kind of weird when you're like that happens and you're like like the days when I spent all day on a plane or something, right? And just like, okay, what happened in the last four hours, right? Because a lot could have happened. Well, my Alexa is one of my four alarm clocks, and she won't do anything when she's not connected to the internet. I missed a meeting. It was just like, it was chaos. So if your internet goes out in the middle of the night, you're done. Oh, no. Yeah, you're not a, waking up. Yeah, have a backup alarm. Wow. Or be like me and have it, three. That's something they didn't include on the commercial for the Super Bowl when Alexa <laughs> lost her voice. What really <laughs> happened was the internet just went down. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that's why even if, if there's something like there's the basic like I want to get on up around you know eight a.m. Let's say I, I you know ask Siri and 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 you know have that on my phone. But if it's like when I'm you know, like when I'm traveling like I was this past week, you know, and it's like all right, I need to be up by X time to get ready to get to the course for filming by by 8 a.m. It's, I have an alarm on here, a backup alarm 15 minutes later, and I set up an alarm on my pebble. Yeah. So it's like everything going on. Meanwhile, uh, uh, the the alarm clock at my Airbnb is blinking. And <laughs> I was just uh, like, well, that didn't instill confidence, you know, in using that or whatever. I think, I think the last three places I've stayed at have had a blinking alarm clock in the hotel or Airbnb. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, so it's just like, it's an interesting statement. Like nobody uses those anymore because they're carrying 
their timepieces with yeah them, so. I, i've i i still do i actually go so old school i have one of those winding alarms with the actual bell and that's my last ditch effort alarm so if all of the other alarms fail there's one that'll just jolt you into consciousness <laughs> so and so if there's a zombie apocalypse and i need an alarm clock i'm coming you're to coming your to house. me yes there you go <laughs> there you go um but uh anyways this is the awesome cast thank you everybody for joining us thank you uh brandon out there in the kc thank you nick thanks mom for pop- dropping by as if you haven't seen enough of me today uh <laughs> you can check us out and join us live here on facebook every tuesday at 7 p.m eastern at the awesome cast facebook page you can also please check out uh all this and past episodes at awesomecast.com subscribe to us uh, on podcast form itunes tisher spreaker iHeartRadio, google play music podcast is that all the terms? Did I get that all covered? Uh, as well as video versions on the Awesome Cast Facebook and YouTube page. And also, thank you, thank you to our streaming partners, of course, The River's Edge, riversedgepgh.com. That's also if you, if you uh, get in here early or we're running late, which sometimes happens on the feed, uh, we're playing River's Edge uh, in the background as well. And, uh, and of course, I go hang out at the River's Edge uh, for River Talk every uh, third Sunday of the month. Uh, relatively we need to talk about may uh <laughs> and uh we have a lot of fun we did a um we we you you judged a bunch of awesome things yeah that was great i was I, I liked that it, we it was, might it was kind of an impromptu version of what we do but uh it was, it was a lot of fun do you think we should do it that way more often or should we just do the normal awesome thing that depends month? if the other thing works out so <laughs> but, yeah uh, but no no I, I think it was a lot of fun uh to kind of go through those last month and also a uh, shout out to other streaming partner the 405 media.com holding it down for us on the west coast um and they actually carry us uh weekdays at 9 a.m pacific time noon eastern if you want to check out uh past episodes or the, the latest episode on there as well and uh also if you want to be part of our studio audience again we're here every tuesday unless we have a big notification or we're not and we usually that doesn't happen very often hit us up uh, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com and let us know and and uh we'll, we'll make sure there's a chair out for you and you can drop us a line for anything you any questions or stories or anything you want uh to that awesomecast on the twitter and of course please join our facebook group for the awesome cast <laughs> and also a shout out to our fans of the show uh, our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash awesomecast. Uh, he, of course, uh, Matt Weller at the $5 Coffee Club. We were talking old school technology with the Kinect, uh, with the Xbox One, since uh, I might be playing with one here very soon, thanks to thanks to Chilla. And also thanks to uh, a fan of the show at the $1 level, Mike Fedor. You guys can support the show for a dollar a month if you like what's going on here. You don't notice the dollar going. I, I, okay, I support like probably like 12 things at a dollar a month or if it 20, they even do like below a dollar. I think the dollar is the minimum they do on Patreon now. But I got a bunch of those and I, I barely notice that. And uh, you get to support uh, some good content if you like what's going on here with the awesome cast. Or if you want a, more, a broader message out there, we also have advertising, advertising opportunities. You'll hear them at the, at the beginning of the show and throughout here. Um, <coughs> hit us up, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Today, it's, it's an inexpensive, inexpensive way to get out to our awesome audience. Uh, and uh, Missy will be uh, guiding you through that. Uh, Wednesday's off strike, uh, but that's okay. We'll get, we'll get somebody to take care of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's get to our awesome things of the week and you know i think it's appropriate because it is infinity war week and uh chilla has something very of course of course the guy the, the the tony stark of the show has the avengers um for this week yeah and i was super excited to see this um because i've done i have some like custom images that make make my lock screen on an iPhone look way cooler mm-hmm. from a lock screen perspective. I was surprised to see this, that, that Otterbox has partnered up with Marvel. And if you go out to their website, they have a number of Marvel cases on sale, um, ranging from the iPhone seven, eight and Oof. 10. That Black Panther um, looks nice. The, the plus devices, the Black Panther looks really nice. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the, uh, the cap shield looks really nice and it looks like caps. Uh, they do have it for the S nine. They don't, they don't have the cap. They don't have cap shield for all of them. Cool looking Thanos um, one peeking out from the side. Yeah. And I like how some of them, like the Iron Man is, they named it. I am Iron Man. Mm-hmm. Um, there's Wakanda forever. There's a symbol. 
So they gave him some some kind of fun names too to go along with it. I, I actually was going to use that it's Infinity War week, um, and that was going to be my awesome thing of the week. And this was the closest tie in I could do from a tech perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, but I am I'm super stoked for the movie. I actually have tickets for Friday night. Mm. I'm not going to make the Thursday night showing, but. One I will make the Friday showing, one try, and I will spoil it for everyone. Oh no! no just, just kidding. I there won't you go. Spoil there's it a there's a sweet Thanos one right there. Nice I, silhouette shot. I like this a lot, shot. and this really shows a trend for OtterBox because I remember when I f- I'm a huge klutz, especially when it comes to the phone. And I had an OtterBox before, and it was so ugly, and it was so large, it made the phone so big that mm-hmm. you felt bad having this case on the phone because you buy this nice slim phone and then all of a sudden it's like four times the size. And the last auto box I had really slimmed down and it actually looked like a nice case and this just shows them becoming even more trendy. I really like the direction that they're going as a company because yeah, it I'm, still has that protection. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping they do a line of these for the iPad. Because mm-hmm. really, <laughs> we have Christopher's iPad in, a, in an otter box and to give him something like this, like right now I'm just collecting stickers that I can, I can put on there. But mm-hmm. um, doing something like this has a, has a much nicer look. Awesome. I, in and to the art because I went from uh, what was it that we, what, what was the one that uh, Katie that we we took to the ICP shows and, and they survived life proof life proof mm-hmm. cases. Oh yeah. And, and again, kind of bulky, but it was like mm-hmm. kind of a oh, I, I didn't get Apple Care and I'm not dropping my phone <laughs> and destroying it. So it yeah. was like we are super protecting this thing. And I picked up an Otter Box uh, for the the A plus. And 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 it was it's a nice kind of you know, I don't know, deep blue. It's sharp know, kind looking. Of yeah, it's a, it's a sharp, stylish mm-hmm. looking thing that even I think adds to it, uh, to to a certain extent. And I'm really happy with it. It protects about everything. I mean, not the screen, but again, I have Apple Care, so it's like what thirty bucks to fix a screen now. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm less concerned about it. Uh, so I I don't need as bulky of a thing. And I mean, I think this was only like twenty bucks, right? Well, I went. Wow, they've really gone down in price then too. Well, that's also, incredible. I think the I think the form factor is almost exactly the same as the seven. Yeah. So that probably made a pretty big um uh, difference on that too. So I I also think too the 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 average one that are like rated for up to like a four foot drop. Mm-hmm. So I mean, and four feet's pretty. I mean, it's more than just dropping it at your waist level, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. You can get, you can still get the Otter Box. I can't remember like what this, the, the Defender the Super Defender crazy one. series, yeah. where okay. like they're meant for construction workers, and it'll take a, a forty foot drop off of a you building. Need that. it, 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 that's functional that, at that's, that point. Yeah, that, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah and those usually come with the the belt clip. And, yeah, and yeah. That offers front front protection and that's while, while that, that was always my concern because like on a shoot or something or you know where you're like you know you know in the middle of a field and the dust and dirt and everything and you drop it in mud or something you know like i'm have more opportunity to expose it to elements it's not day-to-day it's in my yeah. pocket use right mm-hmm. So, uh, Katie, were you trying to say something? Well, I'm just laughing at Chilla now because he's like, no more, you know, like the four foot drop. I'm like, I have a 37 inch inseam. If it comes out of my <laughs> coat pocket, it's going way more than four feet. <laughs> I was like, oh, crap. Or, you know, if you're tall. Yeah. I was or say, if you're tall. I'm yeah, frequently yeah, yeah. dropping it from that height because that's just where my pockets are. I, I This is not. It's, I feel like it's like nothing to do with a case. But um, the X that I have, mm-hmm. I have it on this. this it's Tech 21 is the case I have it on now. And. I have not dropped a phone. I'm not going to win because I'm going to totally jinx myself. I have not dropped a phone more than I have dropped this particular phone. Mm -hmm. And it's been like, okay, cool. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) And like they talk about the screen being, you know, water resistant and yeah. (laughs) I'm shocked how well this is holding up. Well, Mm -hmm. that's like I had a 4S at one point and I used to deliver uh, plants out of a box truck Mm -hmm. and I would leave the phone between my legs because I'd use it for GPS and I would go to get out of the vehicle, and I would drop oh. it from the box truck. So we're talking a, a pretty huge drop yeah. repeatedly. And this thing lasted without a case at all, no mm. case, for over a year before it finally started cracking. And mm-hmm. then it was a short time once it cracked before it finally broke. Yeah. But I wasn't upset at all. I couldn't believe how durable mm-hmm. that phone was. And, and it gets me thinking. I'm, I'm glad your phone is holding up because it gets me thinking how what a shame it is that how flimsy so many of these phones yeah. are mm-hmm. or, or, or or you know they they, <laughs> they do like generally they're gen- they're holding up pretty well so when i see somebody 
you know, seeing a lot of the people that get into my lift and everything, they're like FaceTiming with everybody, but they like a massively cracked phone, right? Yeah. yeah. And you're just like, what did you do? Did someone run over that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just like, your car? like, you, like it is like highly careless to be able to have that happen at this point, yeah. right? I mean, the one that, the one break I had um, was, I think it was a 4S, maybe a 5S. And I had sat at one of these, these kind of larger cameras, like like we, what we have here, kind of a fuller prosumer camera. Um, there was a nice spot that I could, like a flat part that was like perfect for just setting something on. Mm-hmm. So I would just, we were out doing a shoot for our, our old nonprofit news show with Chachi. And I was like, okay, boom, boom, you know, sat it up there because it was the controller for our um, the iPad um, teleprompter. And then they were down by a strip and it just like fell off and I heard the crunch. Oh. It fell right on like the rock sticking up, oh. you know, oh by a by like a planting area or something. And like I heard that, I was like, I don't want to pick that up. I don't want to pick that. Yeah, up. but it, it was the only screen break, a uh, phone screen break, I think I've ever had. Oh wow! So I get them all the time, but I'm pretty. I'm, I'm like you, Katie. I'm pretty brutal with my phones. So mm. I don't try to be. I try to be. Take I don't care either. Of it. Oh yeah, it's it's just... it, it's, it's not. It, it's just. How you are, yeah. and I don't think there is a corrective behavior to help oh. you. <laughs> you know, because it's it's dropped. I mean, like I, you know, Sorg and I are like six foot something. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's up here when we're using it. I've dropped it from up here. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's always Oof. I'm always amazed because we get over the two years when we're we're updating, and and Missy's phone is just like, why is yours so pristine? Mm-hmm. And mine is not near that. <laughs> and I've had a case this entire time. Yeah, but it, I think it is. It's the environments and everything, so it makes sense when you're. Wait a minute. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, maybe it's just the Iron Man one. It is just the Iron Man one. <laughs> if, you, if you go, the, the Iron Man time. case glows in the dark. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. That's amazing. The face one or like the, the more kind of... The, the face one. Okay. Awesome. Uh, I'm wonder, I'm surprised too that they didn't do a... Um, I'm kind of bummed they didn't do a Note, Galaxy Note. Yeah. Mm. They just did the, the 9. Mm. Katie. Mm. These are pretty. Katie. Mm-hmm. Can I be a rapper again? Yes. Oh my gosh, yes. It's our future. Like Parappa? No. No. <laughs> no, we're gonna be like real rappers. Not really. Um, yeah, Sork has a, a rapping background. I do not have an official rapping background. I do, and look at this, I'm gonna cross shows. Uh, our friend of the Mayhem show, a BC Steel, and I frequently have rap battles across Instagram stories, so you you if I don't know that we we communicate through raps, um, because who doesn't? Oh yes, I've seen this actually. <laughs> it's pretty darn amazing. Is that public? Like, can people? No, watch them? Uh. <laughs> it should be. We should. I should talk to him. I said we, we should. It should be a thing. It's just us lip syncing rap music while wearing face masks. Uh, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, it's ridiculous. There's cats. It's it's pretty fantastic. Instagram rap battle. I know. That'd be amazing. <laughs> That's a thing. But you can do it on this is this app called Rap Chat, which has been around since 2016. But they just got like 1.6 million dollars. Jeez. Yeah, it's founded by like somebody who's an actual rapper and somebody who's just more on the geek side of things. So their powers combined created Rap Chat, and essentially it's uh, they call it musically for rap. Um, you c- got beats like there's over a thousand beats on there that you can use, and you essentially you rap and you post it to this this essentially network of other people who are also looking for rap music and. Um, creating their own rap music all in a free app. It's, it is, cool. it's disrupting the creation, collaboration, distribution, and discovery of music via mobile. Because music needed more disruption. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it very Ooh, much really feeds into the uh, millennial kind ah, of creating your own. This guy is intense reviewing this app. I need yeah. to get it in front of him. I don't know. They're making a lot of inside jokes, I think. Uh, so so what is it? Is this like the uh, anchor or the musically uh, of, of rap, I guess? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's yeah, essentially like we've talked about Anchor being your own podcast. Now you can be your own rapper and mm. produce. It's essentially producing and recording and everything and distributing just from your phone. Mm. So if you want to be a budding rapper, we got a thing for you. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Can you download the raps after you? Because then you could post them to Anchor and you I, could I, have yeah. you could have <laughs> rapcast. Oh, oh. oh, look at that. New show idea. Rapcast. Oh man, that should be that should be a lot of fun. All right, uh, Brian, what is your awesome thing? Yeah. Oh, by the way, I did download it. It's downloading right now. So <laughs> yes, we're, we're gonna try this. Brian, what's your awesome thing? So I've got this tablet now that I've been using, and it's great because I have a really really old car. It's twenty some years old. It's it's almost as old as I am. You're saying there's not going to be a Bluetooth connection for that thing. I'm working on that, actually. I got, <laughs> I got a Bluetooth radio I'm going to be installing. Ooh. But 
even with that, you can't access the internet and things like that. But they have this little device I found on Amazon. It was just in my hot deals or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it was only seven, $7 or so. But it's this little contraption that allows you to attach your tablet to the vent on your car, the air conditioning vent. Mm -hmm. And it's really nice. All it has is this little lever that you pull back and it allows you to attach to the vent. And I've seen phone versions of that. I have, yeah. a, I have a phone version that does that. It's yeah. really nice. It just You can extend it so it'll fit any tablet, really. Um, it fits the iPad, but it can also fit an Android tablet if you have one as well. And it sits right next to where your steering wheel is. So uh, it, there's a picture I sent you, Sorg. And in that picture, you can see it attached in the car. And you can, I have tune-in radio up, so I have the, the River's Edge and the Metal Edge there, as well as a couple other local stations. And you can select between all of the stations that you want right there, all in your favorites. You can access your other music it's services. It's like the, the best of having a 20-year-old car and a Tesla. <laughs> yeah, it is. It really is, because the, yeah, there's a picture of it oh, there. That's great. Uh, it, it's really nice. It's, it works super well. And one of the big fears I had when I bought this thing, so I don't even remember when I was looking at it. I was at my house, uh, my parents' house. And I was telling my mom, I said, oh, this is stupid. It's not going to work. It's going to break the air conditioning vent because the tablet is a little bit heavier. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's a full-sized iPad. Yeah, it's right? a full-size. It's the 10-inch. It's nine, the Pro. Inch, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it hasn't really had any issues that, that I could see as far as the air conditioning vent. Now, I haven't used it a ton yet, mm -hmm. but it hasn't uh, really seemed like it's caused any kind of strain or tension on that vent. It works really, really well. It was only seven bucks, so when I bought it, I figured if it doesn't work, it's seven bucks. But it works perfect. I mean, it's really nice, and I think when you go on a long trip, it's going to really make a difference. Mm -hmm. And it's been really nice to to use for navigation when you pull up Google Maps and you have that with that big screen right on your right, and you could see uh, everything in a wider view. It really makes it for a nice, very easy, comfortable trip. Like Google it. Maps up there, a little movie and picture and picture. Yeah, you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I did do that the other day because I didn't watch it, but I just threw something in that I didn't have to see. I had Star mm -hmm. Trek The Next Generation in, and I've seen every Star Trek except for the new ones. It's, it's So then it's comforting so, background audio at that it point. It was, yeah. yeah. But it was easy for me to just do that real quick instead of trying to pull the phone out from between your legs and, and click a bunch of buttons in between red lights. Here I could just keep it in the, the back corner of my vision while I have my eyes on the road, mm -hmm. which was really nice. What was that called again? It's called it's called KRA is the name of the brand here. Uh, I I can't remember what the actual name of the device. It's uh it's just like a tablet holder, and uh, it's it's right on Amazon is where you can find it. It was on sale for seven something. I think it it regularly priced for like ten something. It's still not expensive. Is it KRA or OKRA? OKRA. OKRA. Yeah. Okay. I think I found it right here. This I don't know if this is the same one. Um, but I got this guy right over here. I think it's a little different than yours, but but, but generally but it does the same thing. Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of these, right? Yeah. Um, but but you know, for that as an option, I swear by the CD player on one. Obviously, it's done an option in your car. We saw the tape deck in the picture. <laughs> but, well, but that's changing though. I bought. So that's another thing. I found a Bluetooth radio on yeah Amazon for twenty bucks. Wow. Yeah, Bluetooth. That's it does everything. Need. Yeah. So I can, can then get the... Yeah, so there's a similar one right there. Actually, that is the same one. Okay. Yeah, that's the same cool. exact we'll, one. We'll, I'll drop this link in the notes so, and we should be including it Yeah, so you well. can see right there, it's it's not very expensive. It mm -hmm. works really well. But with the Bluetooth radio, I'll be able to then Bluetooth my tablet to the car radio, and then I can control everything and have it come through the actual car and speakers. That's a, and that's a big thing. Don't <clears throat> grab these at Walmart. You're going to pay like twice as much, oh, yeah. three times as much. Um, like get, the Amazon's pretty decent for these. You can get them for like ten or fifteen bucks. Like that's ten ninety nine right now. Yeah, um, and I got it on sale for seven something. Yeah, it was crazy. It's it's, it's good. Like I even and it's I, good quality. I, I bought too. I bought a second one of those CD holder ones because I need to have one for when I'm getting in a rent a car. You know. So but then I yeah. I take the one and Missy doesn't have one for our car here. So I was like, well, you know what? I actually I left I left. I was like, I'm taking this with me. You have another one in a day, and I just ordered on Amazon right there. So, what's this, what do you mean the CD holder? Uh, the, the so it's um, it, it pretty much wedges into the CD slot. Okay. Itself, and then it, you know it opens up and, and grabs on there. I don't oh. use a CD player, so uh -huh. it's like, well, let's make some use out of this thing. Yeah, hmm. and it's a good spot on there. It's not really um. At least in my car, of course, it's going to be changed, you know, different for everybody, but it doesn't block anything important. Like I'd be concerned putting a entire iPad there, what does it block? 
right? Because yeah. some of the buttons that connect Bluetooth are right would be right behind sure. it and everything. Yeah. So uh, that's one concern as well. All right. So my awesome thing of this week is a fun little game I found. Actually, today, uh, traveling back from Erie, I was not driving. I feel like I need to. Uh, but I was just kind of flipping through things, looking for... Uh, I, I was looking for another app or went going to... There's a bunch of updates that came down today. And uh, I found something called Stagehand that was um, featured... A uh, featured game up there. It's a dollar ninety nine on the uh, iPhone App Store. It, it's a platformer, um, but instead of I, I, instead of um, um, you know operating this little guy here, I'm actually changing the stage around him. I'm sliding up and down all these platforms, and it's kind of you know it's got that eight bit kind of look to it. And even these, I can move these up and down these purple things in the top. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. And but then if you, uh, oops, there you go. And if it gets squeezed in there, you can also share whatever just happened as a GIF on social media. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. So if you like something cool happened, which not in this case, you can completely like share that out. And I, I had shared something to like I think Facebook or something earlier today. Uh, so it's a fun Oops. little thing. Again, it's only two dollars. It's a fun like just you know different platformer kind of situation that you can play with, and, and, and just one of those nice little time waster you know, classic video game, you know, with spun on its head a little bit. You know, you're collecting coins like some other games that might be on the iPhone. Uh, <laughs> really? They do that on other games? Yeah, I know. Coins? What? Uh, but a fun little game. Again, Stagehand, it's iOS. Um, I don't know if there's an Android version. I didn't get a chance to check that out. Um, <laughs> my rap chat's already downloaded. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of... Cat Mario. Did anyone ever play Cat Mario? No. Oh, you should look up Cat Mario. It's amazing. It's a free game, and basically they they take Mario Brothers and they replace Mario with a cat, <laughs> but things that shouldn't kill you do. And really? it's amazing oh. because you have unlimited lives, but it's the most frustrating game in the world to try to get through. They make it so impossible, but you have unlimited lives, so you can just Keep going play and, and, going, and going and going, yeah. I found it. It's loading Flash, and I think it's, it's old, still so. loading, so this might not be... You know it's old if it's loading Flash. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, like, this is around when I was in college the first time around, so... <laughs> yeah. It's been there. Been around a while, but it is definitely fun. I, I remember I used to get addicted to that game, and uh, it's great. It's all in, it's, everything's in Japanese, so the cat will yell things when it's dead, but you can't read any of it, because it's in a foreign language. Ooh, there it is. There, is this it? Let's see. Yeah, that's very Mario, and that's definitely a cat playing this thing. So, and you're playing with your keyboard, and he died. I didn't see the Japanese when he died, though. Okay. So, yeah, a lot of times there is. Let's see, you'll see that in a moment, I think. Uh, the coin didn't, the coin, there, there wasn't really coins. It just kind of moved the block up. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes that happens. That's you think weird. you're going to hit something and it doesn't, uh, like, is it moving on me? Uh, you know, okay. I jumped on that thing. Aww. That, ah, something bumped out of there. It's, uh, this is kind of fun. Uh, I really just, just Google cat Mario. And I got some other Mario stuff that might touch on here in the show that wah, released wah, that too. Wah. So, um, awesome. Thank you everybody for sharing their awesome things of the week. If you have any, hit us up, uh, let us know in, uh, again, the awesome cast Facebook group or anywhere else. Uh, so I want to give a shout out to our friends right here. The OG slice on Broadway, right up the street here in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. Um, I know it's how, you know, we get Brian to come back, you know, every so often there. There he is. <laughs> Getting the taste of Beachview there. It's supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. There you go. We're going to give you the <laughs> videos getting that sweet Brian eating a slice shot over there. <laughs> uh, ladies. Uh, <laughs> but uh, thank you to our friends. Again, they've been supporting us for a good long time. Uh, some of the best pizza in Pittsburgh. Uh, they award winning. Award winning. Uh, several uh, best best Pittsburgh pizza uh, by several publications and several voting methods, I'm sure. Um, no, that's Katie. That's the site. Uh, <laughs> but uh, go check them out. SliceOnBroadway.com and uh, location, of course, here in Beachview, the OG PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Although be careful because I think um, they, they do close it to outside of game traffic, 
during the games. Uh, so just be wary of that if you go down there. Uh, Carnegie PA down on Main Street, and of course uh, over in the East End, East Liberty, over on Center Avenue. You guys can uh, check them out too. Online ordering. Uh, I know the location over here is on Grub Club, Grub Hub as well. If you uh, do that. But don't do it, use DoorDash, as we discovered last week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks to our friend SliceOnBroadway.com, PJ underscore Slice on the Twitter. Uh, from there, uh, let's see. I didn't have anything. Oh, you know, I actually had this in the wrong section. That's why the other thing was. So I, it was cool to see. It, it, it kind of had the comment, you know, uh, as you guys know, if you use the Pittsburgh airport, and especially if you use the Southwest Corridor, um, there's a robot repair facility I always get a kick out of over there. Um, but there was some cool news that uh, was in next Pittsburgh that uh, the Pittsburgh International Airport is going to actually team up with CMU um, mm. to be the world's smartest airport coming up here of course uh, if you haven't heard they're actually doing some big construction i think by 2021 uh they're actually going to um make everything available over on the air side terminal uh if you're unfamiliar with the pittsburgh national airport uh it, you 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 have like you know where you get in and do all the baggage and everything in the security and then you take a tram to the air side so it's land side air side and uh and, and it's a whole separate thing and it's where all the stores are and they just did a thing where you can get through security and just shop apparently um, and they're going to rework that. So you actually just drive right up to the airside terminal. Like, you know, if you're familiar with like LAX or something, right. Uh, to kind of shorten that, uh, for some reason, I don't know what they're wait, doing. So that means space. you don't have to wait an hour after your plane lands to get your baggage. Um, well, I don't, I would, I would hope that would help. Because to me, they're not a smart airport until they figure out how to do that. <laughs> maybe Robots. that's part of it. Maybe, yeah. that, maybe that's part of it. You know, that, that extra time to for you to travel to the other building gives them time to also travel, you know, it's just so if we're closer, is that going to add anything? Or are you just going to be waiting longer? You know, what, where's because that Because that's balance? one thing. I was at uh, Florida. We went to St. Pete's Airport in mm -hmm. Florida, and that airport is about the size of this studio. But my goodness, you walked off the plane into the airport and your luggage was already circulating. Wow. It was amazing. This place was so small, you had to walk down a, a set of of mobile stairs onto the runway to get into the building. There was no tunnel, I, nothing I, like that. I've been that. to a couple of those. The, uh, the yeah. Lincoln and Pe Peoria and Joplin, Missouri. Like these, these are some pretty small airports. Yeah. The service was impeccable, though. Oh yeah. Uh, usually they Where this are. one was. Yeah. Usually they are. One had free coffee. Ooh, wow. I can't remember which one. I think it was Nebraska. And I was just like, what? You know, because it's it, incredible. Just, like only one flight in the day that gets you near where you need to be. Yeah. So you have to be there at like five in the morning in order to not waste two days traveling uh, from the middle of the city. Or I'm, I'm in the middle of the country, but uh, but no, I mean this is this is part of that. They uh, actually have 1.1 1 .1, uh, billion dollars was earmarked last uh, September uh, for improvements to the airport. Um, this is going to be part of the um, CMU's Metro 21 Smart Cities Institute. Will develop apps and other smart smart technologies. Uh, including efficient security screenings, uh, things like that. So, uh, you know, again, pretty cool to see them kind of, uh, you know, still kind of rolling forward uh, with with uh, plans for that as well. So, and uh, I wanted to throw out here, uh, this is one that Doug actually shared over in the Pittsburgh Podcasters um, section. And so that was my first awareness for it. And then I found this article over on the gadget. Uh, I don't have an Android phone. And I think most of us here are. You're, wait, I'm you're an Android. Android guy, yeah. You're Android. I'm okay, Android. do me a favor. Yes. Go search for Awesome Cast or Wrestling Mayhem Show on there uh, in, in Google search. And let me know if it looks kind of interesting to you. These are a live test. Because, again, I haven't had a chance to really look at this. So supposedly um, Google search on Android also doubles as a podcast player so if you search for it it should come up with that kind of situation and i don't know i believe this is if you probably most likely if you have this in you know google play music or something like that are, are you what are you seeing for results mine over there? just came up with the website, the website and then the twitter handle maybe if i do podcast so awesome cast podcast do you mean in a search bar like the search widget yeah no there's nothing coming up in the actual search try, to try something search. like uh freakonomics or uh or uh what else they have listed here fresh air 
something NPR. It might be something that we need to do that we haven't yet because I'm just learning about this. <laughs> no, um, no, nothing's coming. Nothing's up. coming up now. No. <laughs> Doug lied. Doug, what the hell? Well, according to this, um, um, yeah, the, 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 do you that? have to be on the next version of of uh, Android? Is it like a new Android P type thing, like a beta? No. So no. when I search fresh air. I get recent episodes with play buttons. Mm -hmm. But what am I supposed to see? So according to this, you're supposed to see... Wait, what do you see? I see like... It has the web link. Mm -hmm. And then there's play buttons for episodes. And yeah. There's play buttons for episodes. Yeah. So apparently when you when you press that, and then that's what they're kind of showing here in this Engadget article, is you get the play buttons. It, it pulls up as a po kind of a de facto podcast player. And also that will supposedly sync with your Google Home. <laughs> as well so like this is kind of their answer separate from having a dedicated podcast app which you know kind of with google music they do um that's going to be uh built in there um uh, the, I think a little bit npr in your yeah. awesome cast uh but <laughs> yeah doug had shared this initially and huh. says um you know he had no idea his podcast showed up like this and and uh the work they're actually doing um he says i need to get on this team <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a pretty good um, um extension there again kind of that awareness of the podcast and everything uh you know built in to at least the android side of things it'd be nice if this was something that if i'm just in like google.com right and search for this and i got all the play buttons and everything mm. that that's actually that works that does work yeah like because i think i if i could just go into chrome and do fresh I'm not there. seeing that. And it's, okay, so on, on that side, probably because you're on an Android. Yeah, it's well. I'm guessing it's the way Chrome's Chrome's figured it out on the mobile version of yeah. Chrome, and I'm sure it's not long until we see see it on the desk, the desktop, laptop. No, yeah, it, it's it's kind of the first thing. You, I, you better I'm, get this working with Awesomecast. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I'm gonna have to dust off uh, uh, my my Nexus Seven, and uh, so I can do that. I guess I do have that Samsung around here too. So when I wonder what they're, I wonder how they're. Is it something Fresh Air put I, on the front page of their website? What are they? Or? What are they scraping from? Is it yeah? Is it something on the website? Are they pulling it from? Uh, you say Doug said that his podcast was showing up there, and I don't think he's done anything special to to do that. Doug is right? special. It, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um you know maybe you know should i drink that got scraped yeah you know, off of somewhere or or, or something so <laughs> just looking through the comments from before um a, a smart in pittsburgh doesn't seem to go together <laughs> from the smart pittsburgh smart well. enough for him to watch there you go uh but anyways but uh you know kind of a cool thing that they're doing over there and let me double check if there's anything else submitted um awesome so, Brian, uh, let, let's touch on some a couple Amazon uh, topics. You were talking about your issues with uh, your internet going out and your your Alexa. Yeah, and she was, it, it, there's a song she sings called Raining in the Cloud, and it's been raining in my house for about a week. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, so that's a big play, voice, you know, that they've been doing there. And there's a couple of big plays, and I know one of them that I've seen going around, and you, you, you submitted here for the show here, uh, what, what is the other thing Amazon's looking for doing next in home? Yeah, so Amazon is actually creating a house robot that will be able to do robot things in your house. And uh, it, it looks it looks really, really great. Very, very cool. I definitely would love to have something like this. So is it, it's your Rosie the Robot uh, kind of situation, you think? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm expecting it's going to be really expensive when it first comes out. But you know what? The prices on all this stuff keeps going down. Like once it comes out, it drastically mm -hmm. will drop. Like the, I, I was looking into buying a, a robot vacuum cleaner, and they sell them for as low as seventy some bucks now, which I, blew my mind. But yeah, it, Amazon's starting to to look into robots that will be able to do household items for you. With I'm assuming it's going to be connected to Alexa, so you'll be able to say Alexa do this or Alexa do that, and then the robot will just go and and do whatever you need it to do. So we've seen a few things like uh, was that Jibo that came out a little bit ago? Like we we're kind of excited about it at first. It came out and they're just like, well, it's really kind of just a, 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 a an Amazon Echo with a with a face, 
Oh. Uh, <laughs> and it didn't do like like Amazon came out with their thing, and it was just like. You know, it really kind of leaped what this supposed robot, you know, personal friend robot thing yeah. was, was going to do. Um, so it'd be interesting to see, like, what they do when they apply this to, to that kind of thing. Is this something that's going to be, like, basically like a, a, a larger Roomba that you can talk to? I think the idea You're, is it's, it's supposed it's, to it's actually... A so, it's a social Roomba. I think it's actually supposed to do things for your house. That's kind of what I gathered when I was looking at the article. Uh, it, because it will know when your cleaning products and your toilet paper is out, so it will automatically <laughs> reorder them. Yeah. You'll never be without. Which would be great. Yeah, yeah. You'll also never be able to touch it, and it'll get the packages out front. <laughs> well, they are working, so that, that's interesting. And I saw something. I don't want to steal your thunder, so I'm going to wait on that. But Or should I steal your thunder? Steal away. Okay, steal I, away. Go, keep, keep your train of thought. Go I, for I it. saw you mention something about them being able to put packages in your trunk. Yep. <laughs> they already now have a system, and, I, and they tried to sell me on it, but they, it was a little too far for me, mm-hmm. where if you get the video camera and um, a, a keypad outside, they'll just unlock your door in your house and deliver your items right inside of your door. And we, we've talked about it a little bit, and, and, and you know, on this and other things I've heard, it's just like a little too, I don't know if I want to give that much access, or I have a dog and a cat, and I don't yeah. trust strangers to do that. <laughs> Um, although See, if you're worried about that, cause I started getting a notification when I ordered that CD holder, yeah. that CD phone holder, um, you can actually, um, now stock your package. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it said, Hey, your, your package is eight stops away and you'll pull up the app and they shows the delivery guy hanging out in my neighborhood, driving around, dropping off packages on the map. Oh, wow. Oh, I didn't know you. So you can now. watch. So if it's an Amazon delivery, now they're tracked, probably just using their phone and everything uh, on top they're of everything chipped. else. Yeah, they're chipped. <laughs> well, <laughs> another an injection on their onboarding project. Well, see, I am actually open to the idea of the 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 system where they can just go into your house, but I would only do it if I had a foyer. Mm. Like if you had a yeah. foyer oh, with yeah. a lot of locked yeah. door, yeah, where oh, like yeah. you have the one room they can access, but they, then it can't get to the rest of the house. Yeah, yeah, or you, you had kind of like a... Um, what do they call it? like a, a wet wet area? What you know, like mud room? Of, mud room. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You you actually have a house. Circle of, gets a square. There you go. <laughs> who who has the full house here? <laughs> well, it's going to be interesting because so we've seen we've seen where home builders are taking into account home automation and yep. putting certain things in and doing different things during the build of a house. Will we see where? new homes start to get the Amazon delivery nook or room. Or, or as the article we're, we're, tra- we're leading to here, your trunk. Or your trunk. Which appar- because apparently in 37 c- cities, and if you have uh, a particular GM or Volvo car, um, they can deliver to your car... <laughs> Which I don't understand this because I can remotely unlock and lock my car. And apparently, there's something that uh, they're saying on vehicle, vehicles model 2015 and newer, and, and with active OnStar. Uh, which you know, OnStar they they can take control, unlock, mm-hmm. and you know, get your location and everything. So again, like that can be part of it, where you know they can use that system now to access your car as a delivery person. So you can get that package delivered. They're showing a video wow. of somebody with a pickup truck here, and the package is just hanging out in their in their back in the, in the back seat uh, uh, for it. So um, that's pretty interesting. It says it, it plans to add other automobile automobile brands over time. They probably have to get the, like you know, the equivalent of things like OnStar and, and the Volvo on on. But I guess that's my wife. So I have a Hyundai. Yeah, and I, I have OnStar and that stuff, but I can't participate. No, so because, because you're not you're, you're not supported yet, right? Yeah. We're going to that CarPlay issue, right? Uh, my mom has a Subaru Starlink uh, 2017, uh, uh, but, but I mean that's the app thing for them, and and you know it looks like it has like those OnStar kind of capabilities. So I I imagine you know once they make the deal and make the connections, because it's a technology thing, you roll mm-hmm. it out a couple and <laughs> you go from there. Um, so I, again, another way to get your package, you know, uh, it's it's interesting. To going going on with the whole Amazon kick, and, and, and this is kind of like a side awesome thing. Uh, I'm trying. See, I, in my house, I use Alexa for everything now. I'm an addict, and I get into the car, and I can't access Alexa, and it's really really frustrating. But they came out with this 
really cool device, which I'm looking to possibly get. It'll plug right into Ooh. the charging port in your car, and it, it acts as a phone charger as well. And then you can actually ac- access Alexa without touching anything, just via your so, voice. So wait, is Alexa built into that car charger? Yeah. Interesting. Alexa's built into the car charger. The car charger has a mic attached to it, and it even has the, the mute button that ah. comes with the Alexa. Mm-hmm. Oh. And then you can access Alexa and do anything. You can access your, and that's your an Amazon anchor. That's music. an anchor product. Anchor is really good for yeah. like phone charges and everything. Oh, good. Yeah, I was really excited about it. I tried to buy a, a cheaper option, and, and it just wasn't as good uh, for the phone. But this seems to be really, really good. It, it looks nice. I'm looking to possibly get it. It's highly rated, and it, it can do anything. You can order stuff. You can turn on your lights in your house while you're driving home and, and everything like that. So it really looks like a, a pretty cool device. And it's only 40 bucks, which I think is pretty reasonable for everything that it does. Yeah, where is it? Where is it pulling the internet off of? It comes uh, to your phone, so to it your, uses your, Bluetooth. So it's pulling off of that, okay. Yeah, and that's probably all you need, really, because you know you'll be in there with your phone, so it should. As long as that, that's and then if you have the, the tablet set up like like with this device, <laughs> you can then download the app on this tablet, mm-hmm. and then you can actually use Alexa. You could say Alexa, direct me to Sorgatron Media Studios, and then it'll pull up the map of your Google Maps, and then wow. give you directions right here. <laughs> she's trying to, <laughs> to respond now. <laughs> yes, and the one in the studio. I've been thinking about getting the Google Home in here just to play with it. And so I can use Google Music, honestly. Yeah. Uh, and we'll have them argue over things. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's the Rove Viva by Anchor, if you want to check that out. And it's um, currently going for... Is there a It's on price? sale for 40 bucks right now. You're seeing it for 40 Yeah, the, at least that's what I got, but... Then I again, be, I'm, I'm in the see all buy, uh, uh, buying options. Oof, so those do, you, are... do you have a USB port charger? I don't know. My car's okay. 20 years old. <laughs> well, so, so that, and I've actually seen what people do is because the the dot uh-huh. is just oh, is USB okay. powered. Yeah. So they're taking and the dot also is almost the perfect fit for a, a cup, cup holder. holder yeah we've seen that's some hacks a good around idea. that yeah. so they take they just take it and plug it in and then they pair it to their phone oh that's a clever idea yeah and, and it works pretty well it's amazing what they're doing because there was another device too that's uh, it was on sale for 20 bucks and it's the same size as the echo dot but it was an off brand so it, it might have been anchor it, i'm not sure but i bought it for my parents because they don't have an alexa and i thought well here's a 20 dollar one they can test it out. If they end up liking it, I'll get them a better one. So then I can do the phone conference and everything else with them. But I, f- I figured for 20 bucks, if they don't like it, I'll put it outside. But mm-hmm. it's a really, I think, great entry level echo for someone to use if they're just trying to get into the market. I'm really afraid to get my mom a, a, an echo because she really like openly uh, uh, identifies with the old person, uh, Alexa, on snl from a while ago okay yeah <laughs> like every time it comes it's like oh that one of the old people one that's what i need i'm like yes mom you've told me like ten times yes well my started. big thing is is my parents they, they, i saw it floated around i don't <laughs> did know I, how... did I, is she playing music did i accidentally <laughs> cue something up <laughs> i don't know how committed they are to to moving to florida but they floated the idea around and I'm really trying to get them into the whole Echo environment because I want them to get a show or a spot at let one me point. Pre- let me prepare your house for you. <laughs> yeah, because the thing is, is if they move to Florida, I'm not a phone caller, and I, you know, and I flat out tell everybody if you if you move away and and you don't do other forms of communication, we just won't talk again. Yeah, yeah. Let's so, you got to make it easy, and there's so many options at this point. There are and, and there's video so many, I can the do, FaceTime, and and, yeah. and, and, and you know, whatever platform of FaceTime and everything like that's. That's a big thing, you know, Facebook in general mm-hmm. as, as kind of keep those connections together. So, uh, Chilla, I have a lot of video game things that, that we're not going to get to here, but I, I want to get to yours. Uh, the Nintendo Switch is getting jailbroken. So, yeah, so rooted, jailbroken, whatever you want to call dun, it. This, dun, dun. This, this article called it um, um, jailbreaking. I'm guessing it's because it's iMore.com and they, they do a lot of Apple stuff. Um, but the first public boot rom jailbreak for the nintendo switch has been released um you can go pretty much to anything including news.google.com and it's a top story right now (laughs) um they do have kind of step-by-step instructions 
Um, you can start using Switch Brew, which is the home brew engine. Um, what I really like about this is usually this opens up the floodgates to uh, emulators, which then lets you run all of your old ROMs Ooh, on the device. And sidestep that horribly priced and and uh, virtual console store yes. that they have, which is just so. And, bad. and when I look when when I look back on it and and um when I look at some of like the the ROMs that I have for emulation, it's things that I would probably not be able to get my hands on like a turbo graphic 16 to play Splatterhouse and, yeah. and those yeah, types of I things. I don't think Splatterhouse has come out on virtual console because like, and yeah. I, I still have like Bonk's adventure yeah. from turbo graphics. Cause I was buying things that I never had a chance to get my hands on. Right. Mm-hmm. When I had my first Wii. So, yeah. but yeah, that, that's where, that's where I really enjoyed this going. And, and to me, there would be games that I would buy like the first Zelda, right? I would go right. back and get, Get the Legend of Zelda, yeah. Um, but they don't have they don't have that stuff for the Switch, and I feel like hopefully mm. this will force them into moving that forward faster because yeah, they always have to re re step or release everything for each console since the Wii to the Wii U wow. now with the Switch. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, did you buy uh, Super Mario Brothers on on the Wii? Well, you'll have to wait for us to release it again on the Wii U. And that's then buy crazy. It again. Now you could boot into Wii mode. On there, and of course, going from the Wii U to the Switch, you don't have any backwards compatible now. So that's now that's cut off, and you're starting from scratch. So it, it, they've been, you know, versus you buy a new iPhone, everything you buy on the iPhone b- before pretty much works, right? Uh, Xbox 360 is really great about backwards compatibility these days. Uh, a lot of stuff is compatible, you know, and and then the Nintendo's like new system, buy it again. Uh, but they're also the strongest brand. So I feel. Are like, they still? Uh, there's a lot there that they survive, and they're like one of the hottest consoles, um, basically off of their first pro- party properties. Oh, for the last like three ge- three generations. I feel like serious video gamers prefer Xbox or PlayStation. Uh, yeah, but they're still like I gotta play my. But the Mario. mass quantity. I'm, yes. I'm sorry, I don't see too many people with Halo tattoos. Uh, <laughs> but I know plenty of people with Triforces on them. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, that's that is uh, it's the Mickey Mouse of video games. You know, it, it's I mean, it's a bad example. Uh, <laughs> it's the Spider Man of video games. <laughs> is that more appropriate? It's the Star Wars of like again, like they could do if you if this like this is a thing and it's gonna have Zelda and it's gonna have Mario and maybe you're interested in Metroid and these other things that we made too and Pokemon yeah then we here you go um so that's why it was a big deal when like we got Mario on our iPhones right but it's not a full Mario game but it's yeah. still enough for me to have on my iPhone so uh, they're real protective of that brand well I mean they should because that's the only thing that's keeping them afloat mm-hmm. I personally I like Nintendo better because I like my video games to look like video games. But at the same time, I recognize how inferior a lot of their what, their stuff is. As I, far I'd as urge video you, quality. I'd I'd urge you to check out the Switch. Mm-hmm. Um, and where I it's think they're, stuff. I, I think they're having a problem getting um, some of the some of the game producers to publish to their system because they do have. There's a Nintendo tax. We'd like to call it. We talk about the Apple tax. There's a Nintendo tax for their game cartridge because it's all a lot yeah. of cartridge based. So there is a there's a higher price point for the for the higher. It hasn't been there that there's thing ever since the cartridge. Wii though. I feel like they've had a hard time getting third party publishers to. But to it go used to be them. because of processing power. Yeah. Or... I think it's now. Now I think it's these some of these companies kind of abandon their platform and they don't want to go necessarily go back. Okay. But if you look at like the 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 castle wolfenstein games that are being released and the the doom game that was the quality was really really good now yes the screen on the nintendo switch is 720p Mm -hmm. but it's also this big yeah i mean you're not really i i'm very impressed with the quality on the on device and when docked I mean, it, it is to me. It's extremely, extremely good quality. Even when it, even when it blows up on a big screen, mm-hmm. um, what I'm not impressed with is the battery. The, to me, the battery life's short, um, and there's not enough third party. They're they're really 
making taking advantage of their their first party games and they need to somehow get more vendors but that. they've been really great about um indie developers yes too it's hmm. weird because you're like I, like i was playing with my brothers and he's got you know uh, geez i don't even know what was out at the time arms and uh um uh, maybe mario kart and then it's like here's a bunch of indie games that look like 8-bit because it's how they were designed, right? Mm-hmm. You know, because it's that's that retro look, right? And I'm just like, you know, I always feel weird when I'm playing a retro looking <laughs> game on an Xbox One. <laughs> it seems just like, am I appropriately using this yeah. giant thing, you know, where it, it was a $300 console and most of the time I'm playing platformers, you know, that look the same as they did two generations ago, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, things like that. But Oh, and you know, you know what's getting re-released for the Nintendo Switch. Hmm. Night Trap. <gasps> Night Trap. Night Trap. Wow. <laughs> a Sega CD um, slumber party <laughs> horror movie thing that wasn't really horror. And it was that old VCD yeah, quality yeah. video. Yeah, those are fun. Well, anyways, talking about um, interesting and explicit things. <laughs> uh <laughs> How do you know I'm coming to you, Katie? I had no idea. I was hey. just <laughs> I was just uh, previewing this video to see if I could play this on the show, and I think I, t- I can up to a certain point. Ooh, cool. So what is... So, Tell me about how we're going to save the planet. We're going to save Captain water planet? with porn. Uh, no, we're saving ooh. water with porn. <laughs> I'm sure that's a porn, too, is Captain Planet Triple X. Oh, I can't <laughs> imagine. <laughs> uh, so RedTube, which is owned by the same parent company as... Uh, Triple X Bohemoth Pornhub, not my words, their words. <laughs> oh, I didn't know they were. I didn't know that was a conglomerate. I didn't. It's a thing. When did that happen? Did, did, did they, was there a, a porn acquisition? Yeah, I'm sorry. So they have a new app, which I love the the graphics of this app. They're they're pretty. <laughs> I'm darn watching amazing. the video, and the video is so much fun. Yeah. So yeah, watch the video. Yeah, enjoy the video. Um. So essentially, it's it's just on Google Play right now, but it'll be on iPhone soon enough. Um. Essentially, it tracks the length of your daily showers. The less time you spend in the shower, the more points you'll get. Uh, so essentially, it kind of you start it up the app, and it looks like it's listening to you in the shower. So when it the shower noise stops, it stops counting the time, obviously timing you. And um, if you hit a certain point, they will reward you with a week of premium subscription with unrestricted access. Plus, you're saving the planet because you're oh. using less water. Wow! I know it's pretty amazing. And um, this is this is probably my favorite part of the whole article is the quote from uh, RedTube Vice President Alex Taylor. We understand that sometimes RedTube is a part of the reason people around the world take longer showers. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we're thrilled to be able to bring light to this issue in a fun and interactive way where people can now spend more time cleaning up rather than getting dirty in the shower. That's awesome. <laughs> so <laughs> this is fantastic. I love it. That's awesome. So uh, again, red tube. Save the planet. <laughs> Saves get the free planet. porn. Jeez. <laughs> the one wrestler we've talked about that that was sponsored by Pornhub. Yeah. Like he actually calls it like the Pornhub de- uh, penis plex now. Like as his <laughs> move. Like like it's it's a branded wrestling move. Isn't that's indi- amazing? This is an independent pro wrestler. He's not like a, a WWE obviously. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or Impact Wrestling. You know, or Ring of Honor guy or anything like that. He's on Lucha Underground though. But I don't think they use that branding there. So that's great. But, but still, like like that. He. That's a great idea though to. to tie it into a move that's like some like yeah because he's like a dirty porn star mustache guy you know kind of feeling character and everything and he has this kind of fun thing where people like grab his penis and he he suplexes them right (laughs) Mm -hmm. because it's it's just that much powerful this show is going a different way uh but anyways in and yeah he was like the first uh because they they started a sports division to have sponsors you know yeah sponsor the you know to be their spokesperson and he was the first one they signed up for that. So. Wow. I, again, just, the, you know, it, that's why we end up talking about these sites because they're so innovative. Yeah. Between this or joke products or apparently real products. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious to see if this actually gets on the um, iPhone store mm-hmm. considering it is linked with to RedTube. Yeah, true. So, like, I feel like that's going to be a sticking point for them. Or is it like maybe it's going to be a web app or something that will just circumvent that. So, who knows? But it'll be interesting to see. 
um, report back to us. Oh, yeah. Actually, no. Actually, Brian, you have the Android phone. Yeah. So report back to <laughs> no, us. No, you have to report for us. <laughs> <laughs> you have an assignment now. All right. So, hey, guys. Uh, a shout out, of course. Um, I'm going to do a couple back to back here because we're running a little late on this. First of all, big shout out to Alex Cars, Alex Cars Media and Design, alexandercars.com, alexcars.media uh, to check him out. He does everything from websites to T-shirt designs. Hey, you know, there's a lot of bands out there at the Millvale Music Festival coming up there on May are. 12th. May, uh, May 11th and We're going to we're gonna com- combine our plugs right now. And maybe a lot of them need some T-shirt designs. And our boy out there in there the uh, Los Angeles era, area, he's hooked us up with designs for the Wrestling Mayhem show on this network. Um, several professional wrestlers on ProWrestlingTees.com, which is the preeminent... Pro wrestling, not WWE, uh, merch store, you know? Uh, and and so he's very well represented on that. He's done DVD covers, websites for us, including indie wrestling.us's first launch with us. Um, so please go check him out. If, uh, he's great to work with even remote, no matter where you are here in the country, we've done plenty of projects with him. Alexandercars.com. That's K A H R S. And thank you so much to him for supporting the awesome cast. And uh, like I said, hey, Millvale Music Fest, yeah, May twelfth and the eleventh, and the and wait, what? Yeah, I didn't, uh, ca- I didn't know this. We have an opening night Friday night at the Ooh. Pittsburgh Food Truck Park. That's going to be starting at five p.m. And I, Brian Crawford, will be hosting the initial night, the kickoff to all of the fun Friday night at the food truck party. We have great bands there, like the Park Plan. La- the we've got Layola. The uh, the Dove Wires, lots of great stuff Friday night. And then all day Saturday, starting around 11 a.m. till the end of time, we'll have 200 bands between Jeez. the two nights performing all wow. throughout Millville. Uh, we have Katie Dudas, who is gracing us as a host as well yeah. at the mm-hmm. Millville Library for the Young Artist Stage. Uh, lots of great hosts as well. I mean, obviously and <laughs> yeah <laughs> and also great food great uh great drinks amazing sponsors it's going to mm. be a, a great night that's awesome psychic media services our sister yes. company is going to be uh sponsoring a stage i believe uh, we'll be providing one of the live streams and, yes uh, uh which you know as i've mentioned i'm usually unfortunately not available for this because of my work schedule uh, you're lost but <laughs> i'll be in the middle of michigan international uh uh raceway Checking in on Millville Music Fest thanks to the live streams. Via four live streams. Well, four stages streaming nice. that day. Uh, via Psychic Media Services, which will have their stream. They'll also be working with us to have a Millville Music Festival page live stream. We'll have the River's Edge streaming, the Mr. Small's main theater stage, and then the Metal Edge, which will be streaming at the Fun House. Awesome. A lot of good stuff. A lot of fun stuff. Uh, go check it out at millvalemusic.org coming up here. May 12th. And you better believe we're going to be reminding you again up through here. And yes. of course, check out our awesome chat with uh, Mike Zikafoos. Yes, that was great. Fellow Ninja Turtle fan. And of course, uh, uh, heading up the artist. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're expanding into there. an arts festival. Mm-hmm. So. So taking over uh, one of the streets there. We're going to have a live forger as well. Live forger. Yeah. That's Steel Forger. Because uh, Missy was explaining this to me. And I, I didn't say out loud because like, and we got forgery over here and just like, wait a minute. And I realized money or identification. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I will steal your identity right in front of you. Yeah. Oh, no, no, it's not that it's art. It's, it's steel. <laughs> it's, 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 it's going to be uh, hopefully a lot more fun than the other thing. So, uh, but no, that's awesome. It's good to see that happening. It takes over that town. And it's a, if you don't know where Millville is and you're in the Pittsburgh area, it's like right across a bridge from uh, Lawrenceville. Lawrenceville. So it, it's not hard to get to on a Saturday for sure. You, you don't have lift, to work. Uh, you can um, Z trip your way in as mm-hmm. well. Uh, and then it also, if you park at a parking location, they have a Z trip shuttle that'll be nice. moving things around. Yep. Go check it out. And you don't have to go through too many tunnels or bridges to get there Whoa. and worry about them being closed down on a Saturday. Uh, <laughs> so one of the benefits of being on, on that North side of Pittsburgh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh all right and, and we got a lot of things going up of course going on up here uh uh leading t- uh, into the next several weeks uh, of course thank you brian for joining us here on the show thank this you week for having me. john carmen we had rescheduled till uh, next week cynthia klosky of ship collaborative who just had a really 
a uh, big announcement uh, that uh, they were part of a, a big Brazil project uh, that was featured in uh, nextpittsburgh.com today. And also Kenny Chen of Ascender will be joining us. And of course, he's been involved in the uh, IBM Watson um, uh, XPRIZE AI project uh, that's been uh, had a big base here in Pittsburgh with all the technology hap- going on here as well. So uh, it'll be good to get, uh, get have him in here or maybe get an update on what's going on there and then startups happening over in the East End that he's involved in. Um, I actually ran into him at the VR uh, meetup a few weeks ago with Shell Games was featured. So uh, River's Edge dot, River's Edge PGH.com. Yes. For you, Brian. That's I think it. I think you got, it's everything Millville Music Fest right now for upcoming. <laughs> That's, it's our shows mostly that uh, have been updated, but yeah, everybody's yeah. talking about the Millville Music Festival. So I've had a, uh, this is one of 20 interviews I scheduled in a month's time for our tw- interviews or shows for the uh, the music festival. So I'm, I'm all in. That's good. That's good. It's a good thing. It's great to see that community being showcased in, in this way. So I, I definitely uh, I'll look forward to seeing how everything comes out this year. So, um, of course, John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitters. John Chichilla on the Facebooks. ChillaTech.net. And Katie Dudas. K Dutters on the Twitter. Yep. Kate Marie PGH on the Instagram. You were eating mac and cheese today. Yeah, I ate a whole box of mac and cheese earlier. <laughs> I should put that. I should, just, I should just go live eating bowls of mac and cheese because that's just essentially my life. <laughs> of course. Nom nom. Exactly. And uh, if you were on my Instagram, you, you saw my tours of uh, uh, Baja, Maryland, and uh, uh, Washington, D.C., um, where there were very interesting protest signs. <laughs> So <laughs> I, I'm not going to say that one on the air. Uh, that's we've already had the uh, porn segment. So yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah step off my area. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, no, a lot of fun with that, and uh, of course, seeing a lot of good technology. Hopefully, I can have a little bit to report back here or some stuff that we'll put up um, as part of the uh, Baja SAE um, uh, situation. Hopefully, I'll see some cool stuff at the Bo- Bosch. Bosch is that the company uh, who usually has a booth over there in. Uh, uh, Michigan for uh, formula in a couple weeks as well. A lot of fun there. A lot of traveling happening. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. I don't know if she's still on strike. Producer Missy back there for not flipping off the camera too much from back there. She's, nope. She's hiding. She's ignoring us. <laughs> she's ignoring us. Uh, she's concentrating. She's working. She's working. Apparently not on this show. So it looks like somebody's doing their own show notes again. All right. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you, everybody, that joined us in the chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.